director of Murder at Mandai Camp, co-founder of Sightlines Entertainment, which is behind the event. Boy, boy, it's been years since we last, well, since I last spoke to Derek. Derek, thanks for joining us today on Money Mind. Hey, Stanley. Hello. Thanks for having me. And, and hi, um, um, Willin? How, how yes. do I pronounce it? Oh, Willin is yes. with us too. Yeah. Willin. Willin. Hi. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Now, firstly, tell us about Murder at Mandai Camp. Oh dear, I don't know if mm -hmm. this is a thriller, murder mystery, something. Um, this is an original production for Zoom. or Is it based on an old script, perhaps, that has been tweaked to suit the current circumstances of no live theatre? Uh, it, it, sort of, you can say that actually um, this idea came about, I think, two years ago uh, in, in discussion with my, myself and, and the playwright and director Chong Zichian. Um, and we were planning to do it actually last October uh, during the Halloween period, but uh, you know logistics and everything else. So we decided, okay, let's let's you know postpone it and then just put it at the the, the the back seat for a while. And then um, and then you know so and then COVID happened. Uh, and, and and so actually we were me and Cixian was actually working on another show together in February, but we had to postpone that. Um, and then so the idea came about what should we do and how can we just you know make use of technology and, and things you know to, to continue doing art and so we revisited the idea and now um, you know uh, reformat it in, in a sense for the zoom audience right so this is yeah. definitely going to be quite a new frontier for for mm -hmm. you guys at sidelines um, have you mm -hmm. done done it as a maybe a test with a smaller um, curated audience to see if it really works out on zoom because mm -hmm. it's a very different platform altogether yeah so actually um we are we we have um scheduled for the whole week next week of uh for technical rehearsals as well as trial runs and also in fact next wednesday we're doing a, a special trial for for some industry uh in, in our arts community some of some so, so inviting some of them to, to join us to give us feedback um the, the reason why is because uh you know this uh, we, we have to kind of set it up first and prepare all the the videos and stuff the backgrounds and stuff so so we can only do it next week but uh, i have experience running uh zoom webinars and, and large scale about you know three to four hundred people events on zoom so in terms of the technicalities i'm quite i'm fairly quite familiar with with zoom in, in, in in that sense yeah well the title is so intriguing murder at mm -hmm. mandai camp tell us what's the plot of the whole th theatrical performance yeah so so you know the the, the idea is uh you know when when we met uh, me and Zichen, we were talking and and you know the, we obviously you know we have a lot of army stories and and also ghost stories of uh, of you know the army days and stuff like that so we thought if we want to do something interactive a murder mystery kind of thing might might be a bit more intriguing and interactive for for in the zoom platform so essentially we were using some of the the, the stories that we know uh, and then combining it with, with uh, uh, of course, a, a, a storyline whereby, you know, a, a, a recruit, uh, a, a white horse, uh, gets uh, found, uh, found dead in, in an outfield exercise. And then, of course, you know, then we interview various suspects, the officer, we have his bang mates who, who went AWOL, as well as rumours about, you know, various supernatural sightings and ghost stories. And, and then at the end of the, the, the show, uh, the, the, the participants will get to decide and vote who will who, whether the suspect is uh, guilty or not? So 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 that's in, in itself like a who done it kind of a, a murder mystery kind of uh, story. Ah, uh, okay. So it's at the end of the whole performance where the audience would be asked to hazard a guess who was behind the murder. Yes. So then that also kind of uh, I wouldn't say aff uh, in that sense that affects the ending. So I wouldn't give it away too much. But 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 their participation will will also kind of craft the ending. Um, and also on top of that, to make it a bit more immersive, um, uh, I think we, I dare say this is the first time we are getting everybody to join a Telegram channel. And through that Telegram channel, we're feeding information, videos, evidences, so that the, the experience is almost like 360 and, and to, it, it kind of like also it, with, with, uh, in their house per se, because you know, they're on the phones, they're on Zoom and all that kind of thing. So we're just trying to make it a lot more interactive and immersive. Talk about omni-channel. Mm -hmm. Here you go. <laughs> You're watching the screen where, where you might be, you know, um, having that Zoom performance in front of you and then you got to hold your mobile phone and, and be... Well, I guess a lot of us are pretty good at multitasking these days, so it shouldn't be a problem. Although I still don't have Telegram. William, do you have Telegram yet? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't really had any use for it, but I suppose now I do have a reason to sign up for it. And... Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, um, I mean, the reason why we chose Telegram is also because of PDPA, because then you don't have to reveal your number and stuff like that. So we thought that was a great channel to, uh, you know, to use. Right, this is Money Mind on CNA 938, and we're speaking with Derek Chu. He is artistic director of Murder at Mandai Camp and co-founder of Sightlines Entertainment. He's been telling us about the live theatrical production called Murder at Mandai Camp, which will be available on Zoom next weekend from Friday the 26th of June to Sunday the 28th of June at 10 p.m. And if you have any questions for him, you can call us at 669-11938 or text us at 963-11938. Now, Derek, um, very important question now. How are you going to monetize this experience? Mm. So, so the, the, uh, we, we, are, we are kind of uh, ticketing this event through Systing. And uh, we understand it is, you know, it's, it's challenging and trying time. So we want to try to make it also as accessible as possible. So it's almost like a, a ticket, uh, like a movie ticket. So it's, 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 uh, but yet at the same time, we also want to give an option to people. So we're doing like a pay as you wish model, starting at $15. So anyone you know who 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 is in a position to give more, they can you know obviously uh, donate more. But uh, the the we want to make it as accessible as possible. So it's priced at fifteen dollars, and 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 they can pay as they wish. Now, unlike a physical theatre setting where you've got limited seats to sell and move, uh, in this case with Zoom, is there going to be any cap in the number of people that you're going to be allowing in for each session? Yeah. So our Zoom capacity is max at. 500 but of course we are we are capping it about 200 to 300 so that at least in terms of you know the the logistics and the admin we we can just manage that a little bit per night yeah mm. So it's, it's, it's slightly different, obviously. We are merging both the film and stage together. So, so unlike, uh, you know, like uh, various uh, uh, Zoom performances that we've seen so far, which is great, and I think that, that you know, our, our colleagues in the arts industry has, has really tried to do as much as they can. This time round, what we want to do is really do a virtual background, but the virtual background is it's kind of animated and filmed in a way that uh, things are moving in the background and you, you kind of feel that you are in the, the setting itself uh, and, 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 and kind of feel, feel, feel that the character is also immersed in, 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 in the particular set. So that's something different that we're trying to do this time around um, in terms of set. So Derek, if uh, William and I were, were to be you know, signing up uh, to attend, mm -hmm. literally attend a Murder at Mandai Camp performance, um, mm -hmm. do we have to have a visual well, uh, recording of our own pictures on your screens, on the actor's screens, or can we just be a static you know, uh, photograph? Oh, oh no! So so you don't have to you don't have to okay. So this time round, we, we, because we are we are trying out many things. So this time round, it will just be the actors on screen that you're watching, um, and and it's so so you don't require you you're not actually required to switch on your camera. Ah, okay. Um, but then but but we do have plans moving forward to test you know various ideas and almost also try virtual reality at some point. So I think that could be something eventually that we might might try but for this time round uh it's it's um it's just viewing the, the 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 stories as it unfold and so we're communicating through the telegram channel to to kind of engage the the audience all right in so this in this way. in this yeah. instance um would there be still people who are helping the actors out with the wardrobe and backdrop changing backdrops and is there a cameraman in, in some okay. of their, their their own homes uh, how does it all work in the background so so actually they the, the actors themselves have to multitask. Uh and, and, and also I think I think firstly because Tizi knew it was going to be in this format. So it's written in a way that um you know you you have some time in between the next scene to to, to, to change over or stuff like that, if that makes sense. So the technicalities in the back end. Um in terms of the 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 technical wise, we, we I'm work me and I, I'm working with a, a, a two other you know, team members who will be managing the the cutting of shots, and we're using we're streaming it through another software system called OBS, whereby you know we 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 we, we it's almost like a studio camera, studio shots in that sense. Uh, so the back end we are handling it, but for the actors wise, uh, their costume change and their their the change of backdrop, a uh, background in terms of the technical wise, they will have to be doing it, and that's why we're devoting a week of tech run to to just get it right. 
because we never know, right? Wow, this is really totally yeah. new even for the actors themselves. Totally, totally. 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 Oh, well, something that's not so new, uh, the issue of refreshments, which will accompany mm. the show if viewers yes. so choose. Tell us more about these refreshments. That oh, you mean there's an intermission? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, 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 it, it's a it's a it's a one hour kind of a, a full on kind of a murder mystery. But but we are actually offering uh, uh, you know a, a an option for people to choose to top up or, or to, to purchase cocktails to complete the experience for the night. And this is something that is uh, something that I hold very dear to also because actually I I, I also dabbled in FMB in, in in the past. And uh, so this this is a friend of mine that I know. Uh, and you know, they recently started this this new cocktail bar, and and you know I was just thinking that you know yeah, to, to, what 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 else to make the whole experience more immersive than just you know having a cocktail, watching the show and stuff like that. So we are we are offering um uh, uh the participants a chance to actually uh, complete the experience to get cocktails, and we are also offering that on the stick when they buy the tickets. Uh, so it's by delivery, I suppose, before the show starts. Yes. 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 That's right. That's right. Okay. Wow. If if they're gonna be two hundred, three hundred people uh, <laughs> cocktails, I hope the the bar can keep up with the demand. <laughs> I don't know, but but because uh, we we're cutting it off earlier in the in the like a twelve p.m. in the day, so I think that's where they will manage the logistics from there. Now, Derek, mm. uh, how sustainable do you think is the digitalization of performances such as these? Do you think the arts mm. can thrive as a digital medium? You know, that's something that we all uh, are really contemplating and we're always asking ourselves at this, right? So on the one hand, you know, we, we fall in love with the theatre and, and as, as Stanley, you know, rightly put in the, in the, in the very beginning that, you know, it is the, the shared experience, it's the, it's the exhilaration and, and just sharing the space with an audience, telling stories and impacting them. Uh, but, you know, I also do know that we, we constantly have to evolve and pivot, especially in this, you know, new world, new times. And so I think it's it's how we can merge these two together. Um, I, the truth is I don't really have an I don't know how to answer that question. But something I do know is that uh, or, or something to comment about what we're doing is that at Sightlines we 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 always believe in connecting with our audience and going where they consume information. And and so you know if this is the the way they are consuming information at this point in time, then that's where we want to kind of connect them first, and then slowly bridge that gap, and then you know. Build, bring them, bring them, kind of to, back to 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 the theater, or 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 build the arts and culture scene and grow it even more, if, if that makes sense. Um, I, I yeah, I, I I you know I I don't know, I really don't know, I don't have that answer for that. Um, but 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 one thing I what one thing in in, in various conversation I had also was that I think we we're seeing a a kind of a rebirth, and I think COVID is a is a catalyst, and it is um um. How do I put it? it? It kind of levels the playing field because you know we are, for, for the longest of time we're struggling with you know building this culture in Singapore, the arts and culture. But now maybe you know it's a new genre and maybe it's 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 a co-creation and we can really build this arts and culture on a new kind of landscape or a new platform. I don't you know so, um yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope I answer your question. I don't know what I am, but um, those are some of my thoughts. Yeah, and let's, uh, before we let you go, uh, throw yeah. one more question at you. The arts sure. and artists, essential mm. or non-essential? <laughs> I knew that question was coming up. I tell you, that, that took Facebook by storm yesterday, wasn't it? Uh, you, 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 you know, I think, I think a few clarifications I've been saying and making already. One is that people need to know that artists does not just mean people who draw or people who paint, right? Everything that is that that you know that that we see and do and everything that is creative is you know art and and it's a form of art. Even communicating is a form of art, right? Uh, even food is a form of art form also. So I think that is so essential for sure. Now I understand that in a pandemic and it's a very in difficult challenges and times. Of course, the 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 luxury or the 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 the, the consuming art would would obviously always take a back seat because you know the 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 main. Uh, survival means and, and things, you know, food and everything, security is more important, I get that. But yet at the same time, I, I feel that people need to realise that art can play a, such a crucial role in a crisis. That it brings people together, binds people together and, and lifts spirits. And so, um, essential, 
for sure. But in a in a crisis, I understand where they're coming from. So I, <laughs> so I hope I have your question. Oh, well, well, Derek, I'm sorry, we're running out of time. But in just a few lines, could sure. you tell us why the show is only open for those eighteen and above? Um, I think uh, uh, firstly there there there, there are uh, you know supernatural themes in it and and of course uh you know uh, the, the 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 topic of murder and stuff like that so so we're just uh in 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 line with also the guidelines uh um uh with 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 MDA we 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 thought we limit it to eighteen and above so that at least uh it's it's suitable for 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 for. For the audience, eighteen and above. Yeah, I mean, you did say the yeah. of spirits, so yeah. Um, so Cystic uh, will be where we can get our tickets. Uh, prices start from fifteen dollars. We're talking about murder at Mandai Camp. Uh, we've been speaking with Derek Chu, co-founder of Sightlines Entertainment. Thanks for joining us, Derek, and all the best with this new uh, performance. And I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you.